Yeah, it's pretty decent, you know. It slides. Welcome back to the channel. Today behind us, we have the brand new Tesla Model 3 Performance loaned to me by Tesla themselves. They wanted to give a car enthusiast the electric Tesla experience. So I thought, why not? Let me sign up for that. But today I'm not gonna do a normal review. I thought, you know what? There's tons of Tesla Model 3 Performance reviews online. How about we switch it up a little and instead of doing a regular review, let's do what life was like if you just bought yourself a Tesla Model 3 Performance. So, um action, I guess. So now you've picked up your Tesla Model 3 performance and you want to go for a nice winter's drive in cold, wet England. I've taken it to the top of a beautiful, picturesque location. We're going to drive it down the hill, see how it drives, and just see if it's um, comparable to that of a regular car. But I'm going to go through this with the mindset of someone that's just bought a Tesla. That's, they've never had an electric car before, and this is their first electric experience. So you uh, just got your brand new Tesla Model 3 performance, and it comes with new headlights. So the new redesigned Highland Tesla Model 3s have a uh, sleeker, more aggressive headlight design. Um, it isn't very similar to the original car. It does look a bit more generic, but I understand what they're doing for it. looks more like the cars moving forwards. You also get this redesigned front bumper with air curtains on the side to improve aerodynamic efficiency. And exclusive to the Tesla Model 3 performance is this front splitter. So it's again, more aggressive. I'm not sure if it actually adds more downforce or improves anything. It just looks cool. Let's go on to the side of the car where everything with the silhouette is kind of the same until you get to the rear. And on this rear section, you have redesigned tail lights. From this angle, they look the same. But from here, you can see it's a, again, a much sleeker design. The spoiler comes off the edge, not to add downforce, again, just to look cool. And if you come over to the back here, you can see the new Model 3 Performance badge. Um, and also Tesla is now text on the rear instead of a Tesla logo. If you go back to the side of the car, you will see the new redesigned Performance alloy wheels with, um, caps on them. I think they look pretty cool. Um, a lot of people online are saying they prefer the original wheels, the original performance wheels to these ones. I think these ones add a bit of identity and I, I do like how they look. They're surrounded by P0 um, rubber. So apparently Tesla works specifically with P0 to design this compound for this car. As you can see, it's got the little T symbol on the side. So you may be like, why didn't I just buy a used Tesla Model 3 performance of the regular generation? And that's because of a few things that have changed under the hood or under the front bonnets of fruits. I'm, it doesn't have a hood, it, it has storage space. First thing that I want to get onto this change is not only just the wheel, like I was mentioning before, but if we go inside the wheel, there's a new suspension system with um, active dampers for the first time ever on the Tesla Model 3. This means that the car can detect, detect? The car can detect and adjust its suspension setup depending on what the road is doing. So there's sensors on all four wheels, uh, which is pretty cool. You can also change it manually yourself. You can put it in sport or uh, comfort mode, normal mode as they call it. And it allows a greater scope of performance if you're doing comfortable things or sporty things, which I like. And it, it just adds a bit more of a sporty nature to the car. Linked to that, you also have the new redesigned and thicker anti-roll bars and then um, multi-link suspension on the rear and a dual wishbone suspension on the front. So they have focused on improving the, the performance in terms of the handling in sporty situations. Confusingly, this car, the European version of the car, is rated to have 460 horsepower, while the United States version of the car is rated to have 510. I've done a bit of online sleuthing and I found the reason for that is the United States car is manufactured in the United States. The European cars are instead manufactured in China. So they use different battery packs with the United States car using the Panasonic battery pack and this car using the LG battery pack. However, zero to 60 times are identical. Sometimes Tesla will quote their zero to 60 with a one foot rollout as they do on the American ratings. I don't know why, it's an American thing. So uh, zero to 60 is rated at 2.9 in America and 3.1 in Europe. But without a one foot rollout in America, you will get that car to zero to 60 in 3.1. So uh, yeah, the power difference is just down to the battery. Inside the Tesla Model 3 performance and all the new Tesla Model 3s, you're greeted with this new refreshing interior that comes with a new steering wheel and an upgraded infotainment system. You also have wireless charging here for uh, two devices. This is also where you put the key for the car or the key card and it allows you to um, start the car without having to carry around a physical key with you. In here, you also have increased storage space, cup holders, and you also have this wonderful extra storage space. There's just tons of storage space in this car. Performance model specific, you get redesigned performance seats that add a bit more bolstering, and they're also perforated, meaning now you can get cooled and heated seats in the Tesla Model 3 Performance. If you jump in, 
Inside the car, you can see, again, the infotainment system is very fast and very reactive. I love using it. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the car. There are some things about it that I hate, but I'll get onto those in a second. But you can also see we have a redesigned um, ambient lighting system that just opens the car up, makes it feel a bit more bright. Again, with the interior, it's uh, very different. We have this newly designed steering wheel here that now has indicators on the steering wheel, which are terrible. Um, I hate using them. The Lamborghini Huracan, the Revuelto, and all my Ferraris have got uh, indicators on the steering wheel. Apart from there's one here and one here on this car. I don't know why they stack them vertically. It makes no sense. Also, um, you could probably notice there is no gear shifting stalk as you used to do with regular testers. Now, if you want to shift gears, you go to the screen and then you um, slide the car forward to put it into gear or slide it backwards to put it into reverse. It is a very uh, finicky way of doing it. And also it's a very risky way in case this screen goes and you need to drive to get it repaired. So what do you do? Well, I'll show you my trick. Put your foot on the brake, you look up here, you press drive, right, you press drive right there. And then you have some more buttons. I discovered that all by myself. Yay me. The last change on the interior is if we get out and we head to the back of the car, you will see that um, it's pretty much the same as before. Aside from there is now a uh, small infotainment screen down here that allows you to control your rear um, climate control and also do fun gamey stuff like watch TV and play games. So yeah, the interior of the Tesla Model 3 is a, it's actually really good. Well put together. It doesn't feel cheap as I've read before. So uh, yeah, for me, the inside is a win. I think it's time we take this car out for a drive and see how it performs. So you've just got your wonderful Tesla Model 3 performance and you're taking it on your first cruisy drive, not necessarily the drive home from the dealership, but your first one where you're like, I want to see what this car can do. Because this car hasn't got an internal combustion engine, that means you don't have to run it in. That also means that your first drive, you can do what I've done and put the car on insane uh, drive mode. You have this new sports ride and handling suspension mode, but you also get a track mode. If we press customize, you can change uh, the bias to from understeer to oversteer. You can turn off stability assist and turn off regenerative braking. This is quite cool that you can do all of these things. Understeer doesn't mean the car's front wheel drive. Oversteer doesn't mean it's uh, rear wheel drive. It just means that when you're on throttle, it will bias the car to the front or the rear. You've probably seen loads of these videos talking about range. The range is decent. It doesn't tell you what miles it is up here. Oh, Oh, it does. 279 miles with 92% of, uh, of battery. I think the overall uh, range they claim for this car is about 340, but um, it depends on how you drive. And I'm not about to drive it in a very rangy way. So um, shall we go for a spin? The first thing people tend to do when they do electric car reviews is just nail it from zero to 60. So um, I feel, feel like I'd be doing something wrong if I didn't. It's quick. <laughs> it's quicker than a uh, 52 grand car would be expected to be. It's quicker than a 460 horsepower car be expected to be. But again, we have four wheel drive. The motor on the rear is an upgraded motor from the previous generation, whilst the front motor stays the same. They managed to provide enough power and enough torque to get this car from zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds without wheel spin and without any confusion. And that's the beauty of electric powertrains. Although people say they're not as exciting, they're not as interesting. When I drive this car around in drift mode, it suddenly becomes exciting and interesting. I've also heard some reporters say they wish it made a sound. I don't think it's necessary. It's an electric car. If you don't want a sound, no sound. It would be okay if there was an option, but I think it's okay that there's no sound. It doesn't bother me. Before we uh, continue our uh, sporty drive to uh, break in our Tesla Model 3 that doesn't need breaking in, you think to yourself, hmm, I hear a lot about this autopilot thing. Let's give it a try. I've currently got the system configured to work with navigation, although we're not navigating anywhere at the moment, but it will keep you in lane. It will change lane for you if you require, and it will just do everything you need it to do. It's pretty sick. I love it. The car's slowing down because there's a roundabout coming up. But yeah, uh, I think the autopilot system is probably one of the better cruise control systems that I've used. Let's take the car up horsepower hill and see how it, it performs compared to the other cars I've taken up here. It's very, very fast. You know what? It's quick and it's, it handles well, but you miss a lot of the excitement just because you don't get that, okay, we're gonna drop a gear and do this and do that. And then that instantaneous acceleration does kind of get boring quickly. Although, again, if you're buying a Tesla, you're probably not an automotive person or you're probably not a petrol head to a certain sense, or maybe you are. So you might have another car for that kind of thing, but it provides you with that instantaneous speed, but it doesn't provide you with that emotion you get, which I think is a running theme with electric cars. So the thing I hate about the Tesla Model 3 and Model 3 performance now is that 
It seems that Tesla have realized that they want to make people feel me even more uncomfortable. So not only do you have your indicators on the steering wheel, not only is it capacitive touch, and not only do you no longer have a gear changing device, they also decided to take away um, the ability to turn off regenerative braking. For me, that's a big issue because I like driving without regenerative braking. And there's going to be tons of people probably in the comments, probably online saying regenerative braking is the better way of driving. There have been several studies that show that it's more efficient to coast to a stop. Yes, you can coast with regenerative braking, but that requires you to keep your foot on the accelerator. I must admit, if you're used to it, you probably have no issue. But for someone like me that's coming from an internal combustion car, I'm not really enjoying it. And I feel like someone who's just bought this car may not enjoy it also if they've been driving internal combustion cars all their life. As a little demonstration, I'm driving along, I'm driving along, I take my foot off the accelerator, the brakes have now engaged and the car is coming to a stop. Um, they call it one pedal driving, I call it really annoying. So um, Tesla, it's just a software update, please return that back. I can do without the creep mode, which they've taken away. I can do without all the other features that you've taken away, but that is something that I cannot do without. Yeah, it's pretty decent, you know. It slides. So you've just taken your car for your little uh, Hoonigan session, and you've decided that, oh, wow, I think it needs some charge. Thank God the Tesla Model 3 and all Teslas are linked to the supercharger network the world's greatest electrical charging network. I had a Taycan, charging that publicly was massively difficult. But with a Tesla Model 3 and a Tesla of any sort, you could just pull up to your nearest charging location or supercharging location and uh, plug the car in, which is what I'm gonna do now. And I'll show you how easy it is to go from um, zero to 80% charge. So now that you're at your Tesla supercharging location, you simply get, get your hands on the Tesla supercharging thingamajiggy. This opens up and then you um, insert it into your vehicle and charge. And if you're like, what do I do whilst it's charging? Well, no fear, Tesla have you covered. You get back inside your car, you take a seat, and then uh, you uh, open your apps. And from here you can do things like watch Netflix, watch YouTube, uh, watch Tesla tutorials, or if you want something a bit more interesting, you could play some games. So um, I had 85% state of charge. Uh, currently the car is charging at 64 kilowatts, adding uh, two kilowatts per, I, I don't understand this, 206 miles in an hour is what I'd get in terms of range. But um, the lower your state of charge, the faster it can charge because the battery chemistry just works that way. I'm not a chemist, so I'm not gonna try and explain it. The downsides of the Tesla Model 3, the new shape one, you no longer get parking sensors, meaning that your parking system is reliant on the cameras, meaning if your cameras are dirty, you have no way of knowing if you're close to anything without looking outside, which is the bare basics of um, driving, but we're used to sensors these days. You also have these um, horrible door handles that are just the, the least in, did I just break that? The least intuitive thing of all time. I don't know why the door handles have to be like that. Why can't they just be normal door handles? They don't even have to be out. They could still be poppy outy, but just open the normal way. Uh, also, this wonderful white interior, it does look awesome. However, this is not leather. It feels slightly plasticky. It's a recycled, environmentally friendly material. Uh, it just doesn't uh, feel adequate of what's supposed to be a, a luxury car. The roof is um, dark all the time because you can't dim it and there's no cover for it, meaning that um, it's almost pointless. It's a nice addition, it'll just be nice if it could be dimmed or if there was a sliding cover for it. That way you could have had a clearer roof. And uh, the terrible steering wheel with these terrible buttons and these terrible indicators and the terrible uh, gear changing device. Uh, I'll add that to the list of things I do not like about the Tesla Model 3. And the final thing I don't like about the Tesla Model 3, every time anyone asks you what car you drive, you're gonna have to say, I drive a Tesla, then you're gonna have to explain why it's better than every other car. Um, and it's gonna just turn you into a Tesla guy. And that's not good. <laughs> There's a Tesla guy right behind me. <laughs> and to finish up, things I like about this car, it's a point A to point B car, gets you where you wanna go with no issues. Tons of range, no problems. I like the design, it blends in with general traffic. I like a car that doesn't have to stand out. I say that when I have three Lamborghinis, but this would be a nice addition. I'm not getting one though. It would be a nice addition. Performance is well, it drives well. It's just easy to use. The fact that I don't even have to carry around a key and I can just run up to the car and unlock it as long as I have my phone in the pocket. Um, and also these acoustically insulated glass windows just make it a refreshing feeling. Every time I drive a Tesla, I either feel super tired because I'm so relaxed or just really, really, really comfortable. 
and um, these aren't bad things. So if you were interested in getting a Tesla Model 3, would I say get the performance model? Maybe not, maybe it's overkill. It's um, just under 59,000 pounds, so it's a lot of car for the money. However, I think the Tesla Model 3 long range might be the better option if you just want to get from point A to point B. But if you want to do that and be fast, go ahead.